Mm -hmm. uh, great question. So that happens every Thursday. So if you are subscribed to the email, you should get that around 9 a.m. your time zone. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, again on D zone, on the actual website, again, that happens around around midnight central european time and then on on thursday and then on this on again shortly after depending on how quickly the, the editors get that approved push that through so generally by um thursday us time or friday the latest you should be able to see it excellent and then i saw for today we had users from seattle from cleveland from France, and then people staying up late in India. Uh, so thanks, oh. for, thanks for basically, we, we, we're covering like North America, Europe, and Asia here today. So it looks like we got two questions. Let me get the first one up on here. So the first question is gonna come from Mohan uh, up on the screen. How do you scale up API security with the explosion of APIs being released? Oh, that's actually an excellent question. Um, because when I started working in the API space in whatever, maybe eight years ago, there were not that many APIs. The API management was actually fairly easy. APIs, companies would have uh, really few APIs. It was easy to review them. They, they would rarely change. These days, there's a whole explosion with the serverless microservices, cloud native architectures, and everyone trying to be agile. So companies have hundreds if not thousands of APIs, they keep changing all the time, et cetera. So the only way from my perspective is to automate, is to just put API security in your, in your pipeline, make sure that your developers follow uh, security best practices, make sure that the tests are there in the pipeline, make sure that your, uh, that your uh, runtime, that your actual deployments are protected, your policies get automatically updated, et cetera. Just automate, 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 and and do post, use positive security model. I think that's the only way to scale. Great, thanks for that question, Mohan. And then moving next, we've got Yang Yu with the question, what are the recommended auth authentication methods for APIs? Okay, uh, again, great question. So uh, uh, we, we could do a whole separate uh, webinar on that one. Uh, so to, to answer quickly within, within a minute or two, uh, use, don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, use uh, OAuth, OpenID Connect are the most uh, at the industry stands right now. Uh, make sure that you augment that with other um, with other limitations based on the architecture of your application. Like for for example, if you have some sort of a, a microservices architecture and you have a microservice in the back end that is only supposed to be answering to a specific other microservice in the in the back end just don't let it transfer to anyone else like use mutual tls uh, use ip whitelisting uh, use uh, uh, service meshes etc etc so just define who is supposed to talk to who uh, make sure you enforce that uh, and that is the only way that your apis actually um, talk to each other um, and and use industry standards and and uh, security best practices, current security best practices around these industry standards, like OAuth and OpenID Connect. All right, thanks for that one. Our next question comes from Michael Bond on Facebook. Are there any automated tools that can be used to automatically test your API, um, like fuzz testing for APIs? Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> So I, I kind of have a little bit of a conflict of interest here because I work for Sucrunch that, that has tools like that. So uh, check this out, go to sucrunch.com and, and check out these tools. There are uh, like the, we have a fuzzing tool, conformance scan that I mentioned. They can take your open ID, uh, your open API definition, uh, your contract and generate a security test to make sure that the implementation conforms uh to these uh, uh to your contract there are some open source tools as well like um OWASP, uh, zap um, etc uh we again in the newsletter we 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 try to cover all the tools um uh, open source and not open source that that exists in that space great thanks for that and then we've got a question from david i believe was out of uh, france who says thanks dimitri does the 42 crunch security scanner work on premise or is it only a SaaS product? 
Uh, both both on premise and, and and SaaS. Obviously, a lot of APIs, uh, especially there are a lot of private APIs that don't that are not exposed to the internet, and you you do want to, to test them. Uh, and your whatever your your dev your your test your your stage environment might not be accessible from the internet. And as I mentioned, I, I just don't believe that uh, such thing as a private API uh, exists. Any API that you have that even you created with a private use in mind uh, can potentially be attacked. So uh, I think there's, uh, again, you, you need to, to test and ensure security of all your APIs, not just the public publicly facing ones. OK, great. And then we've got one question on LinkedIn from Uni uh, Mana, who asks, is OP, open API based on o, OWASP, O-W-A-S-P? Mm -hmm. So open API is an industry standard, so that's that's different from OWASP. OWASP is again, it's it's another organization, industry organization. So Open API is uh, uh, is led by uh, Linux Foundation uh, and Open API Initiative that has uh, I don't know I think probably close to fifty members right now, uh, including eBay, Google, Amazon, Foot Crunch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's it's an industry and a uh, standard and. Uh, and industry effort and an open standard to define APIs. OWASP is a is a group again industry group uh, for web um, application security that now has the they, they became uh, famous for their OWASP um, web application top ten vulnerability list uh, in 2019. They came up with OWASP uh, API security top ten and it's it's a it's a great organization to to participate in great efforts related to specifically application security, including APIs. All right, great. And then we've got a question from Scott. This is going to be a technical one. Uh, Scott off YouTube asks, are there automated tools that task for authentication, authorization, better, as these are typically harder to detect than traditional DAS, SAS testing? Uh, yeah, so great question. Uh, so IDOR, um, again, uh, IDOR is that broken uh, broken authentication, broken object uh, object level authentication, authorization, a vulnerability that we talk about when you're accessing data that you should not be able to access that belongs to another user. That is harder to test automatically indeed. Uh, there are tools to find those vulnerabilities and test for them. Um, again, some of that technology is coming uh, in the Forge Branch uh, conformance scan shortly. That's in, in, in private preview right now. Um, some of that functionality exists uh, in uh, tools like different Burp uh, plugins, where again you can test the same API on behalf of different users, and then implement your tests and say that I, I'll make my tests on as this user and and get the data for that user, but then I'll try to perform the same test on behalf of a different user, but for the records of the first user. And all of these should fail. And if any of them succeed, it's an issue. It's a, it's a BOLA IDOR issue. Um, so yes, tools for like that exist. All right. And then uh, thanks for that one, Scott. And then we've got a question from Pratik Das, who asked, would you recommend to use API Gateway for delegating security concerns? Uh, so yes, API Gateways are important. Uh, and API management is important. Um, just. Uh, and API gateways can allow you to define different um, security policies. And, and um, for example, if you, you can use uh, API gateways your OAuth, for your OAuth protection and use different uh, scopes, et cetera. So uh, go ahead and use them. Just be aware of what API gateway provides and what it doesn't provide. Some API gateways um, can just do OAuth and, and just maybe rate limiting. Some are more advanced and can enforce, um, can do some of the data validation. Um, check what, what they can do. Check the API gateway and its functionality. Can it do data validation? Can it enforce the paths and the, the operations? Can it enforce the data validation for your API responses, not just for requests? Can it do things like uh, JWT policies, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, compile a list of things. Check what you're getting from your uh, API gateway. Uh, if your API gateway uh, can get that information from an open API file from your contract, please use that to make sure that when your API changes, your enforcement rules, your protections change. And then for anything 
that your API gateway doesn't, doesn't do, um, using API firewalls, you can get the additional protection, like the um, better data validation, JWT policies, et cetera. And as I mentioned, typically the uh, API gateways are sort of something on your edge, protecting you from the external calls. Um, I would recommend that you augment that uh, with uh, some sort of a, uh, internal protection for each API, for each microservice, uh, using API firewall as a sidecar proxy. And so you protect not only the north-south traffic, but also the east-west traffic. All right, great. And we've got two questions in here from David. So we'll go to these two questions from David. So the first one is, can 42 Crunch tool check if a internal secret is exposed? And then a second question from David was, no, I just said the same question twice. So it's not, okay. Yeah, so there we go. That's it. We just asked it twice. So. Sounds good. So yeah, so the, the way that uh, foot to crunch works is that um, it sort of uh, on the on the analysis of the contracts, it forces you to define each and every uh, each and every response of each and every API. So obviously all the, all the inputs, all the payloads, but also the responses. So um, if you don't define that, if you just say whatever that API just returns something, whatever well, re returns a JSON. Uh, then the, the tool will tell you that it's a potential vulnerability. You need to define that strictly. And so um, it would force you to, to do, or whatever, highly recommend and give you a lower security score, and then you can enforce that in your CACD pipeline. Um, and so you'll, you'll make your um, developers define all the outputs, and then it would use that as a positive security model. Um, so if your output is different, that kind of on the runtime protection side uh, or during the uh, conformance scan, during the dynamic testing, if the output is different, that gets reported or that gets blocked if you set it up um, to, to block uh, responses like that. And so if your API then starts starts leaking secrets like we've seen in the in case of um, Rocket Chat, uh, that would get blocked. So that, that's how we can uh, uh, get your APIs to, to become secure by design and not leak that sensitive information. Okay, great. And then we've got just two more questions. I know we're running over. So we, uh, Dimit we knew Dimitri was going to be really popular. So let's get to the Scott's uh, questions he's got lined up. And then we've got one more down here from uh, maybe Mesh. So Scott has two questions. So the first one, Without an API management platform, what recommendations to inventory APIs? How do you define an API versus service? And they have a follow-up, um, I believe, to that one is basically, is there one security test that covers all aspects of API testing? He knows it's a loaded question. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, okay, again, we, without, uh, I would not go into the uh, kind of, uh, into the debate of what's an API, what's a service. <laughs> uh, let's just say that anything that is, any, any service that, that can be uh, accessed over the network is, is an API. It can be a REST API, a GraphQL API, an async API, et cetera, but it, it's an API if someone can invoke it over, over the network, uh, at, at least for the, for the sake of, of this particular uh, discussion and the context of, of this webinar. Um, and then, in terms of API management platforms, uh, again, like I said, I am a fan of API management and API gateways. I, I think that in most cases, it makes sense to use them. Uh, you, um, indeed, you might get some APIs that are not, that have not been published to the gateway, sort of, so your, your rogue APIs that are harder uh, to find because of that, uh, you could, uh, there are a couple ways that you could potentially look for them. One is looking for them in the in the traffic and and doing discovery and discovering APIs uh, just using your um, in your um, applications in in your network. And then secondly, the other way you could uh, find and discover those APIs would be uh, by by looking at the source code. So going through your repositories, uh, find any APIs used from your JavaScript files. Or just find any any API files like open API files that are those JSONs and, and YAMLs that define your API. Again, in most companies, um, source code repositories would be a great place 
uh, to crawl and to find those uh, those APIs. And again, th there are tools from Port to Crunch and 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 other uh, companies um, that can help you um, do that. All right, and then we've got the question from you, Nash. So, is gRPC efficient or more efficient than REST in terms of API designing? Uh, yes, in general, yes. Uh, gRPC uh, is a good protocol because it's it is sort of by design, it is uh, contract based, so that the, uh, it kind of forces um, developers to define uh, the the um, the expected inputs and outputs, and so um, it kind of kind of uh, puts developers into that um, into that. Uh, thought process of uh, hey let me define what my api needs and what it what it returns and and then in, it enforces those things so yes for um especially like microservice to microservice communications um i think grpc is, is, is a good choice all right and looks like david uh, snuck one more question in so it's around 42 crunch so i'm assuming you'll want to take it as our our last question. So he says, can 42 crunch identify, recognize if the API request is attacking the endpoint, a kind of machine learning detection, or someone is trying to forge an attack? Mm -hmm. uh, good question. So uh, no, 42 crunch is not, um, it's not a machine learning um, AI uh, approach. Uh, there are other, other products out there. Uh, again, there are actually a, a lot of them. So I, I will not um, name them so I don't kind of promote one at the expense of um, of uh, another. Uh, again, there are a lot of a lot of uh, anomaly detection kind of systems out there, um, so you can use them uh, in addition to for to crunch and in addition to API gateway. Uh, they would look at the traffic, and then what they try to do is they try to figure out they they try to learn from your traffic, and if something um, some sort of calls start coming in that look anomalous, that look different from what they've seen before. They can flag that and, and, and let you know. So um, if you want that kind of um, anomaly detection machine learning um, approach, uh, I think that can uh, indeed complement kind of positive security model. Um, I would not use it as a replacement for the positive security model. I personally think that API security by design is a, um, is something that you need to do first uh, because again with anomaly detection um, sometimes the anomaly might be there for a reason for example that the pattern changes because your api changed or because it's uh, whatever the, the holiday season and everyone is, is now trying to, to buy your products so the products became more expensive or whatever there are legitimate reasons for something to to start looking anomalous um, and also machine learning algorithms can be harder to train because it's just hard to, to find a lot of traffic that is 100% legitimate and doesn't already have attacks, et cetera. So um, again, uh, machine learning has their issues and their limits, but I, I think uh, in, in some cases, um, it indeed uh, can serve as an additional, um, additional tool that can help you define anomalous, uh, anomalies in, in the traffic. So uh, yes, tools like that exist. Great, and then as I just saw Scott had followed up, it's not a question, he just said, good answer on definition. Bill, it has to have a defined interface, WSDL or open API spec for some tools to be effective, found lots of services that needed spec. Mm -hmm. So that's a good yeah. follow up from, from uh, Scott there and it, if, if you have any additional questions from Dimitri, this audience is so passionate and just loves connecting with you. Um, we'll save up your questions, I guess, for next time or when the API Security Weekly goes live this Thursday on Dimitri's newsletter. There's a link to that in the chat or on DZone. Um, you can post your questions in there or we'll just take any for the for the next time. See someone else also out of North Carolina. But uh, Dimitri, you've got a great, passionate, excited, um, audience today that really sees you as as an expert in APIs, API security. So it's a huge honor for DZone to have you for this event today. Uh, so just really thanks to everyone around the world. Uh, literally, we had everyone from all the, the big continents on with us today. I'm Blake at DZone. And then Dimitri, if you want to take us out with any final words and wherever you are, um, have a great rest of the day. 
Thank you. Thanks, uh, Blake. Thank, thanks a lot for setting this up. Uh, and obviously, a huge, a huge thanks for for D Zone for the for the support on spreading the the word on API security. API security is, is extremely important. Uh, by uh, uh, Gartner uh, research estimates, it is now becoming the the number one attack vector for for applications. So uh, most likely, your applications have APIs. Make sure that they are secure by design. Thank you.